Hey guys, Brian Hare here with another fun color video for you guys. Uh, I've got my absolutely beautiful guest, Curiel, here. And we've been talking about it for a little bit of time. And we finally decided that we're going to have some more fun with her color. We've been doing balayage on her since her wedding last year. And uh, today we're going to take it and we're going to turn it up just a little bit because she's decided she wants to play with fun colors in like the, the pink world. So I'm going to go through, I was thinking about different ways to do it. And one of my main concerns was the integrity of her hair because she's got a very fine fabric that processes very quickly. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to just do something that was going to like be really pretty on the video, but completely trash her hair because I do have to see her. <laughs> so I decided that today what we're going to do is we're going to go through with balayage like I normally do, but we're going to kick it up a few notches and make it just a little bit more pronounced so that when I go in with the pinks later, you really are seeing more of like a, a shadow at the root and less of there's a highlight, there's a highlight because I really want your eye to focus on the gradation of pinks that we're planning on putting through. So I think it's gonna be really great. She's got perfect hair for this. So I really hope you guys enjoy the video. Here we go. So you see I've got her sectioned off here, uh, the front from the back, and you may notice in the before shot, she was wearing more of a center part with a straight across bang. And that's actually part of the full makeover. You can see the haircut portion of this in a video that Matt did on her. I'm sure there's a link below. But uh, I actually sectioned off of the part that we knew she was going to be going off of. She was moving to more of a side part and transforming into more of a side fringe. So you'll see that when we get up to the front. Uh, starting at the nape, I am working here with Sunlight's Balayage Lightener, 40 volume and Olaplex. I like that Balayage Lightener just because it really does have a great consistency and just a really good control. So it's definitely helping me get the application exactly where I want it. Especially in the back here, you can see Curiel is an actual balayage client of mine. And you can see where I've let a lot of her natural color work its way into her overall effect in the past. That's because we like to go for that sort of free lived in kind of feel. Whereas today I definitely want a much stronger blonde effect. So, I'm connecting her old highlights, but then really making sure that I go in between those areas where I'd left shadowed in the past and getting a good amount of, you know, lightness throughout there as well. Because I want to make sure that her canvas is nice and light so that when I go in with those fantasy colors, it really has something to show up on. So just working all the way up. I'm taking thinner sections because I want more blonde you know the more hair you apply lightener to the more blonde you're going to have at the end so that's why i've got the the smaller sections i don't want to completely eradicate her shadowed effect so that's why you can see i'm not focusing on any of the underneath of this i'm sort of just addressing that by the size of my sectioning so you see you take the lightener don't apply it right where you want the highlight to start i come down a little bit usually I don't know, a couple inches from the actual scalp and sweep the brush down as I move up towards the actual root of the hair. That's what's going to help taper off the product and give me just a little bit more control so I can make sure the highlights are exactly where I want them. She's blonde enough on her ends that you can see I'm not really running any highlights through. I've got the Olaplex in there to guarantee that I'm not going to overprocess her hair too much where it does overlap, but there was no need to bring it all the way through because she's already pretty much as blonde as I need her through her ends. So this is the heavy side of the part we're working up now. Bringing everything out again, making sure you keep a good strong tension so that as you're applying your lightener to the hair, it's got a nice little backboard almost that it's it's working off of because if it's if you're not holding it tight enough then you're just going to start pushing lightener and it's going to go places you don't want. So this is why it was super important to work off of her new part because as you can see this is the fringe that used to hang straight down but now that it's going to sweep to the side it's going to need to be blunted in a totally different way than how we've done it in the past keeping a good elevation to make sure we're not pressing the hair against the sections that we've already applied to because 
then color starts to go all over the place and you don't get really, you can't predict your results that way. So this just helps to make sure that there's not going to be any surprises when we head back to the shampoo bowl. As you get closer to the part, you have probably been lightening for a few minutes now and you might be tempted to sit there and just grab a big old section and just start painting, but it really is important that you sit there and pay attention and just be very meticulous and take small sections if you need small sections to create the look you're going for. I really wanted her to read as super duper blonde, so that's why I was moving away from bigger sections with the dark really running through it to much smaller sections where the, uh, the dark of her natural was going to be outnumbered pretty much by highlight. You can see, if you've watched any of my older balayage videos, I was, I was always really big on making sure that you let that root dip down deep into your highlight to give it that, that grown-in effect. And you can see in some of these sections, I still have that little bit that dips down, but it's much, much smaller. I still want her to have a balayage overall highlighted effect so that as her hair grows out it's still a gentle grow out and there's no real hard lines of demarcation but i don't want it to be quite as as dimensional as we've done in the past which is why i'm not letting there be quite as much natural low light in there i know that Curiel does pull her hair up a good bit even though it's shorter or she at least pulls it back so that's why always make sure to take care of that that front hairline so that when it goes back, she's also highlighted that way too, and not just when it's down. Because we're gathering hair, it's more than just a, a flat section that I'm holding. It's, it's bunched up in my fingers, so it's got a few more sides to it. So you got to make sure you're going around and painting all sides of it so that, like I said, no matter which way the hair falls, you've got a nice amount of that highlight in there. And then going in the middle to connect those, leaving just a tiny bit of low light. And you can see underneath, there's that tiny bit of shadow that's not getting painted. So that's really gonna just help make sure that when she runs her hands through her hair, even after the, the pink fades out, it's still going to look really cool and it's going to have that, that dark background is going to make the blonde look even blonder. And then, like I said, being super meticulous, this teeny tiny itsy bitsy little last section, get that painted on, wrap her up, let her process. And then here we go. So here we are. I let her process. She probably processed around 35, 40 minutes. So we're going to rinse her out now. I'm going to do the step two of the Olaplex while I mix up her toner. And then we'll move on to the next step. So back here in the sink, you want to make sure that you take really good care of her hair because we just took her for a little ride with some lightener. So you don't just want to rip through it and start trashing the hair. We've taken so many steps to be really careful to make sure that her hair is going to feel good at the end. You don't want to skip on this one. So just a nice gentle rinse, get all the lightener out. Then once all my lightener is out and I'm sure of it, I'm gonna go in with the Olaplex step two. So I'm gonna make sure that I have a good amount of saturation with that through the hair. This doesn't act, it's, it's just the next step. It's not a neutralizer, it's not anything like that, but it is something that's very necessary to do. The lightener went, I put the Olaplex in my lightener so that made sure that that hair was taken care of through the lightening process. Now this is gonna go in and make sure that even the stuff that I didn't lighten today gets a little extra TLC. So apply that all the way through the hair, get good saturation, comb it through, and you let it sit for a good 15, 20 minutes depending on what the hair needs. And then rinse that out completely. And then I went ahead and shampooed her to get her ready for the next process. All right, so I've got her processed, olaplexed, and shampooed. Now I'm gonna go in and tone her before we do the fantasy color. It's always really important to make sure if you're gonna work with fantasy colors that you get your, your canvas where you want it to be. 
Otherwise, you're gonna be mixing fantasy colors in with maybe some of the dominant pigment that you don't wanna see in the end result. So, since I'm working with pinks, I actually chose Paul Mitchell's 9RB that I mixed in a little bit of clear to kick it up to about a level 10. And I went with the 9RB because it's gonna come out and just give a little bit of a champagne-y finish that I think is gonna look really pretty when I lay that pink over it, so. All right, so here I go. You can see I'm using an applicator bottle, which is a huge favorite of mine whenever I'm applying any kind of demi-permanent or glaze or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, it just helps with the speed of getting it on there. We've, we're spending a lot of time together on a big long color makeover like this, so anywhere I can pick up a few extra seconds. Uh, I go through my little trick. I like to zigzag the scalp first and then sort of, you know, smush that through with my hands and that pretty much makes sure that I'm totally covered there and then just bring it through section by section with my hand to make sure you get a full saturation. Making sure you don't miss any spots. Don't want to cut any corners when you're doing something big like this. Let me process her. Uh, she sat with this in her hair for 20 minutes and it was nice because it really just helped to control any warm tones that maybe I'm not going to want to see in my final result, it gave all of the color in her hair a purpose. And now it's all a good, even, even canvas to move into the next step of our coloring. And just go through with a nice, gentle wash. You can see her hair is still in great shape after everything that we've been doing. Thank you, Olaplex. And uh, so here we go. All right, so here she is after the balayage process. Uh, you may notice her hair looks a little different now. That's because Matt just did a really great cut on it. I'm sure there's a link to that somewhere below. Uh, so now I'm gonna go through and do the fantasy color. We talked about what we wanted to do, and I've decided we're going to do a darker pink at her root and sort of smooth that out so that there's not like a really hard line of demarcation and then fade that into a lighter pink through the ends. So what's going to be cool is I'm just going to do it over everything and the different tones of her blonde is going to show different tones in the pink. So it's really just going to have a, a fantasy color but in a realistic-ish kind of way. Uh, my colors that I use, I did hot pink from, it's the, the Joyco line. And I did, I, I used hot pink for both and I used, I diluted it into clear. I use obviously a lot more for the root and then a lot less for the end so that it'll still marry together nicely. So here we go. First step's just gonna be a normal root retouch and we'll uh, smoosh from there. So I started applying off of the part again just cause I like to know where I'm going with my intended base color. But then, oh wait. So quick discovery, uh, as it sometimes happens with fantasy colors, I applied my darker color to her root and as soon as I saw it hit the blonde hair, I realized that it's not gonna be dark enough. So I, my original color for my root is now going to become my end color because I want that nice light, you know, soft, just sort of hint of pink. So for her root color, I actually went in and I took what the one, it was the mostly clear with just a little bit of the hot pink and I added some of the Joyco Color Intensity Pink because I know that has a much deeper, richer tone to it. So as you can see, it looks nice and deep. It looks like almost, ooh, it's kind of really pink in the bowl. But you can see, once you apply it to the hair, it really comes out lighter than you think it's going to. So I recommend bringing like, get a paper towel or something to have nearby and always expect to mix a little darker here because it's gonna come out lighter here. So. Onward we go. All right, so here we go again, now that I got my colors straight. Uh, again, working typical four quadrants, but I, I'm going off of, again, that her new part, what that's gonna be. And just like when you're doing balayage highlights, it's a very visual look. Like the final look is very, it has to be visually appealing. So I just like to go off of her part so that I can sort of just map myself out a little bit better. I'm going through and doing just a typical, like you would a root retouch if you were covering somebody's regrowth, but feathering out a little bit more so that when I go in with the next step, I can create that transition. I just wanted this to be a little bit more dark at the root. Of course, if you wanted to play around, you bring it down a little further on some sections, you know, play around, have some fun with it. 
Uh, also making sure, especially in something like this, where you're working with the direct dyes and fantasy colors, I'm working away from her face as much as possible because it just you want you want them to be comfortable. And if you're just pulling that color and hair away from the face, the odds of it falling down and slapping her in the face and giving her a big pink stripe across her nose or, you know, not probably not going to happen. So just finishing up here. And then as soon as I get that all on, I let it sit for a couple minutes, let her sit there and think about her new life as a girl with pink hair. And now I'm going in with the lighter color. I really just wanted it to be a very subtle hint of pink through the lengths of her hair so that she can still take it to work and leave most of the shocking pink at the root. So that's why it's a much lighter color and I let the root sit longer than this. I just wanted to, to kiss, give a hint of that champagne, which is also why we use that toner as the, the underneath color before applying this. Make sure you got great saturation everywhere because these colors, whatever hair it's not touching, it's not gonna color. Processed her with that for about 20 minutes again. Uh, and one more time, the color that we used for this, it was the color intensity, the Vero K pack from Joico. I just really am enjoying the, the, the vibrancy that I'm getting from it when I'm looking for it. So bring her back to the shampoo bowl, give her a really nice relaxing wash. She spent a lot of time. She's been a good sport. So I don't want to give her, you know, a quick, fast blast through shampoo. I want her to enjoy every step of this experience as much as we are. So making sure you rinse everything out. Because I was working with just two different pinks here, I wasn't as concerned with the color bleeding back in the shampoo bowl as I would be if I was using colors that might not be so pretty if they mix. If I was using colors that won't mix that great together, then I would just rinse each section that, you know, rinse each color out separately and then try at least for the first initial wash to also keep those colors separate. But since this is all in the pink family and I don't mind if a little bit of that root intensity bleeds out through the ends, I sort of just went through and shampooed her like normal. All right, so let's see how it came out, guys. So here she is, our finished product. Uh, my color, Matt's cut. Went through, you saw us do that nice heavy balayage that really just cleaned out, gave us a nice canvas so that we could play around with the pink. You see, I've got her darker at the root here, it kind of peeks out throughout the hair, and then just a really nice soft pink through the ends so that, you know, she's not afraid to go to work because, you know, she still has nice acceptable hair, but she got to have a lot of fun too. It's just a really, a really fun something else that you can do with these blondes. So there you go. There's something else that you can do with your balayage to really just kick it up a notch, have a little bit of fun. And uh, thank you guys very much. Uh, subscribe to us here on YouTube. Go check out my Instagram at which arm hairstyle, H-A-I-R-E. Uh, thank you very much.